foreign policy expert, a senior fellow at RTRT World Research Centre, also a former Turkish member of parliament. Talib, thank you so much indeed for your time. I mean, without knowing the exact text of Recep Tayyip Erdogan's speech, what do you think it might say or what should it say about Turkey's position in the world? I believe that he will address a number of critical issues from the Turkish uh, point of view. Of course, one issue is the global pandemic, COVID-19. I think he will address that issue to call for a global cooperation in order to find some solution. Because this pandemic is spreading all around the world and I think it needs to be addressed strongly. So this is a very good opportunity for President Erdogan to call on world leaders and the world community to cooperate. Second issue, I think, will be on the uh, international system. Uh, you talked about multilateralism, and it seems that multilateralism is now being eroded. Uh, so he will address the UN system that he has addressed before. He has a very critical view of UN, as we all know, because Security Council consists of a very small number of uh, countries, and they control almost everything in the UN. There are many global issues, conflicts, hunger, poverty, etc., and displacement of people. When we look at the UN policies, I think he believes that many uh, policies and uh, actions of UN uh, failed. So in order to revive UN uh, on the 75th anniversary of its establishment, uh, there needs to be structural reform, which should be more participatory. There should be a representation from different countries, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, so that uh, different views and different uh, positions can be uh, represented in the UN. This will also save UN uh, as far as uh, he is concerned. He will also address regional issues, such as the Syrian crisis, which has been going on for a long time, and Turkey suffers a lot in terms of security issues, in terms of, I think, refugees in Turkey. Turkey hosts more than 4 million refugees from Syria, and also there is an existential threat for Turkey in its near borders. I think Turkey uh, needs to address this, and uh, I believe that President Erdogan will also touch on this issue. Similarly, Libya, there is a transition period in Libya. There is a conflict, and Turkey sides with the UN-recognized government, uh, but uh, on the ground, uh, there are different, I think, uh, options. Uh, Turkey will address this issue and also call for, I think, international uh, recognition of the uh, uh, UN-recognized uh, uh, government. Uh, and also, of course, uh, for Turkey, uh, in these days, the eastern Mediterranean is a critical place where Turkey and Greece are seem to be, they, they seem to be on a collision course. Uh, and I think Turkey will address this issue. Uh, Erdogan will uh, uh, argue that Turkey uh, will not give up its rights uh, based on international law in the Eastern Mediterranean. So these will be the mainly, I think, broadly speaking, the topics that he will be addressing. Of course, humanitarian foreign policy has been on the Turkish agenda for many, many years. So uh, he will also address that issue in many parts of the world, especially Muslims are under attack. So uh, I expect that he will also touch on that issue. Talib, the AK party, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan's party, came to power in 2002. After the end of the Second World War, up to the end of the entire 20th century, Turkey, you could say, was more inward-looking, that if it was looking anywhere abroad, it was looking towards the West. What's happened since 2002 that has made the AK party Prime Minister Erdogan, now President Erdogan, look more towards the East and just increase this reach of influence across the world that Turkey didn't have for decades? Well, I think Turkey has gone through silent revolutions during the AK Party period since 2002. And of course, one area is foreign policy activism. Turkey has, I think, redefined its own priorities when it comes to the foreign policy issues. Uh, therefore, Turkey balanced its relations. Yes, Turkey is anchored in the West, still trying to be part of the European Union, but also it has reached out other uh, nations. Turkey was very active in the Middle East. All Middle Eastern countries were you know, part of this issue uh, economically and politically. And Turkey has uh, initiated African year uh, and also uh, Latin American years as well. Now, when you look at the Turkish diplomatic representation in the world, Turkey is in the top five. That means Turkey has been active all around the world now with official representations. And also in international organizations, uh, Turkey uh, has become uh, very active. Uh, the reason behind it, Turkey uh, is a producing country, is a manufacturing country. 
and of trying to find new uh, markets uh, for its uh, own goods. So this is one reason. Secondly, uh, Turkey uh, has the legacy of Ottoman Empire. So when you look at the periphery of Turkey, so we had all you know, cultural, political, military, economic relations in the past. Turkey has revived all these uh, uh, relations in order to uh, uh, become more effective actor in the region. And also, when you look at Turkey, at, uh, during the AK Party period, uh, Turkey started to negotiate with the European Union to become a full member uh, of the Union, and that still goes on, although there are some problems. And in Africa, in uh, Latin America, Turkey has been quite active, trying to negotiate the crisis, trying to uh, find solutions. And Turkey also led uh, humanitarian aid. This is a novelty in Turkish foreign policy, I think. Uh, Turkey spends more than any other country in the world for humanitarian purposes, more than United States of America, more than many economically developed countries. And also Turkey retuned its foreign policy, establishing links with Iran, establishing links with Saudi Arabia, uh, all the Gulf countries, and also uh, Russia. Uh, sometimes Turkey is criticized by having uh, relations with Russia because it was anti-NATO, etc. But I think the realities on the ground encourages Turkey and sometimes forces Turkey to retune its uh, foreign policy issues. Turkey is still a member of NATO. It is still in the, I think, Western uh, alliance, I would say. But I think the, if, if you uh, describe foreign policy as the interest of a country, Turkey is trying to protect its interest in line with, uh, with the international law and also in line with the historical, I think, uh, realities uh, on the ground. Talib, we've run out of time, but I'm going to give you just the opportunity for a brief answer, if you don't mind. You say that Turkey is still part of the Western alliance. Are some members of the European Union using what's happening in the Eastern Mediterranean to try to diminish Turkey's international reach? Emmanuel Macron, the French president, recently said that we can't consider Turkey to be a partner in this region anymore. Well, I think Turkey has more uh, borders when you compare with the French one. French... Uh, uh, president is trying to galvanize EU support for his own, I think, purposes and for his own agenda. Uh, and he does not really represent the whole EU. Uh, Turkey has had very good relations with the EU. Now there is a tension, of course, but that tension is between Greece and Turkey. It's not between the EU and Turkey. And I believe that diplomatic uh, relations will continue and Turkey and uh, uh, Greece will resolve this issue. Now, let me remind, uh, Turkey is a member of the NATO, Turkey is a member of the Council of Europe, and also it is a member of the OSCE. These are all you know, Western-oriented uh, international organizations, and Turkey, as I said, is anchored in the West, but it has reached out beyond that. Talib, thank you so much indeed. Talib Kuchukjan, a senior fellow at our World Research Center, uh, telling us about Turkey's foreign policy and how it's changed over the years.